All right, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is second class Justin Sherman, so second class meaning I'm a junior. I'm third class Kim Cap, third class meaning I'm a sophomore. And so we are going to be here this evening to talk to you guys a little bit about what life as a cadet is like. Uh, I know you guys have been talking about academics and uh, athletics, so we're going to talk to you about kind of the, the normal side of things, the fun type of stuff, what you're going to be doing when you're not in class or not on the field, what you're going to do on the weekends and at night and stuff like that. So I guess we'll start off and I'll just kind of tell you my background. Well, I'm, um, like I said, I'm a sophomore of their class. I'm on the women's rugby team. Uh, I was on it for last year and um, fall season this year. And then in the spring, I do uh, women's lacrosse. And then I am a civil engineer. I came in as a civil and I plan on staying civil the whole time. But if you want to switch ma uh, majors more than one or two, um, throughout the entire, or up until I think junior year, editor, Spring of, uh, spring, of, spring of sophomore year. I actually switch majors, so I can talk about that a little okay. bit. So. Um, I've started out in one, co so the way it works right now is we start out in one company. I started out in what's called a Charlie company. There's eight companies. And um, so I started out in Charlie, and then um, they, after your entire fourth class year, you switch out for the next three years. You spend the um, last three years in a different company. They kind of split your class up and throw you in different companies just to make sure you meet your whole class so I've made a lot of friends here and I love the year so I guess that's my start. All right so like I said my name is Justin Sherman I'm from Columbus Ohio and I knew I wanted to come to the Coast Guard Academy since uh, basically 10th grade I knew I wanted to come and so I started working towards it then uh, my first time coming to the Academy was right before 10th grade in August of, I think 2000 goodness, I don't know seven, eight, something like that. Um, so I'm an operations research major in computer analysis. So that's basically applied math where you're using computers to solve complex math problems and basically looking at a problem and seeing how we can make it into a math problem, I guess you could say. Uh, like I mentioned, I did switch majors. I actually started as a marine environmental science major and actually couldn't decide, so I ended up, I guess for the most part, double majoring as a sophomore. So I was taking classes in both majors as a sophomore and then decided uh, that basically the drop dead decide date is the end of your third class fall semester. So you have until then to decide. Um, you may do, need to do a little extra work that following spring and in the fall of your second class year just to kind of make up any classes you miss. But it's totally possible. Uh, I was lucky that I was able to fit all the classes I needed in so I don't have to make any up. But, um, so that's kind of the story for switching majors. So if you have questions about majors, feel free to ask about that process in a bit. Uh, a little bit more about me, I am I did Windjammers, which is our marching band. I did that my first two years here. And uh, now I just do intercompany sports, so I compete with the company. We compete against other companies uh, pretty much twice a week. And uh, it's a lot of fun. You basically have three different sports each semester. So it's the equivalent of intramurals, basically. What's a typical day like here at the Coast Guard Academy? So uh, we get up really early. Uh, <laughs> and uh, in the winter, that means you're getting up before the sun rises. But it also means during breakfast, you get to see some pretty awesome sunrises. Um, our boardroom, which is where we eat breakfast, has these huge panel windows. You can see the sunrise. So, so we get up. Um, we go to what's called formation. Basically, we all line up. We make sure that everyone's there um, that's supposed to be there or whatever, um, make sure they're not sleeping in if they're not supposed to, or that they're um, accounted for, basically. And then we go down to breakfast, and we have what's called family-style breakfast. And so everyone's assigned to a table. You sit down, they bring the food to your table, and you pass that food around, so just like you would basically at your home dining room or whatnot. And then we have our training periods, so we start at 7 o'clock. So, sure, so um, training could be anything from um, meetings just in your day room with your company officer or about like um, our different mottos on how like right now we're following a program called the LEAD program so it's just different um, ways to apply our leadership so we usually go um, we've had multiple trainings on that throughout the year and then um, you'll have meetings with just within your class but then we'll also have a core ride sometimes in the morning just to have everybody um, together to have the entire core go up go down to our um, big auditorium and Lee just to um, maybe hear a guest speaker or it's just a time for us to get um, just our military aspect I guess of the day in 7, 8, and 1 before and then at 8 o'clock the first period class starts 
So you may or may not have a first period, but you have to be awake from 8 o'clock until 1600 or 4 o'clock. And so you have to leave your door open, no naps or anything. And then so um, throughout the day, you'll have classes. Or when you don't, you can just um, hang out in the library, hang out in your room, do homework. And then um, at around 12 o'clock, there's a family-style lunch, which is the same thing as Justin said with the breakfast. Um, you have formation to make sure everybody's there and nobody's trying to skip and do homework in their room during breakfast or anything or during lunch. And then um, you go out and do the same thing for family style. You pass the food around the table. And then for the rest of the day, until 16, you have classes again. And so classes are a little bit different. Like like Kim said, you are, you are going to have periods off. And so during that time, it's basically your own time. So if you want to work on homework, or you know, if you play a musical instrument, you want to practice it during that time, you totally can. You want to go for a run or do a workout. That time is your time. Um, there are some uh, restrictions on what you can and can't do, um, but that's just, I mean, those are, those are minor things um, in terms of like, you know, you shouldn't be watching movies during the day, but that's to help make sure you guys are staying focused and whatnot. And uh, really, I mean, you're so busy that watching a movie during the middle of the day is not really practical. Um, so, but yeah, so the, you're, when you have those off periods, you know, you can do your homework, you can hang out with friends, you can talk on the phone, whatever, uh, whatever kind of floats your boat or suits your fancy. So, and then after classes, we have our sports period. So that's when most of our sports teams will meet to have their practice or workouts. Uh, if you don't have a sport, and um, that's basically your own time. So you can work out, you can go for a run, you can do homework if you like. It's kind of, again, your own time for whatever you want to do. How much free time do you have during a free sports season? So you have, you have quite a bit of free time when you don't have a sport. So because I do intercompany sports, like I said, I only go to like sports games, I guess you'd say, twice a week. So the three other nights of the week and then on weekends, um, that's all my time. So sports period is, you know, like I said, I go for runs, I do workouts during that time period. Sometimes if I need to, I'll work on a project, go see a teacher for help or whatnot, but that's your, kind of your own time. I can touch on that one a little bit also in the fact that I had from very first day that we got back in August up until about a week ago, I've had rugby every single day from four until six um, besides weekends. So I've really been consumed, or not consumed, but my four to six period has never been, hasn't been free until about last week. And then you kind of notice this week that I've been able to, I take a nap one day and like do some homework and kind of get a little bit more um, me time and work out on my own time. So it's kind of your own preference, I guess. And it's not like you have to work out from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. So our gym is open until 10 p.m. or 2200. So let's say you are working on a project at 1600 and that goes until dinner or whatever and you need to go to dinner. Well, then maybe later that night you want to go and work out. So you can work out later in the evening during our study period. Again, that, that study period is also your own time for doing homework or you know, at that point you can watch movies or play video games or Lip link, listen to music, whatever, talk to friends, go for a run, do workouts. So it's not like you have to do your workouts during that four to six block every afternoon. How often do you have physical training? Really none. <laughs> I mean, so we have swap summer, and then after swap summer ends, all physical training, so like workouts and running, is kind of on your own time. Uh, there are no mandated PT sessions that we have to go to or anything like that. So. I think it's a common misconception when people see, like, I know on the Coast Guard website they have the plan of the day, and I'll say training period from 7 to 8 in the morning and 7 to 8 at night. That's not physical training period. That's a military, like we said, the trainings where you're meeting with your officer or you're meeting with the whole corps about something. So it goes with that training. And the, it'll say training period two times a day, like Kim said, 7 in the morning and 7 at night. doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have something for both of those times or for either of those times. So for example, this morning, I didn't have a training at seven o'clock, so it was my own time, I was working on homework. This evening, we don't have a training at 7 p.m., so again, it's just study time for us. Did either of you attend the AIM program? If so, what was it like? I did not attend AIM. Um, I did, um, I guess so, two summers ago, and so I, I think that's the, one of the main reasons I actually came to the academy is it, I had a wonderful experience and it, um, it concentrates a lot in the engineering program of um, AIM because you get to build pretty much a foam boat that does different um, Coast Guard missions uh, throughout the week. And um, to be honest, AIM was a bit of a shock to me because I think I was expecting it to be more of like a Coast Guard summer camp, I guess, as somebody put it. But it's, it really gets you, the, ex the first few days gets you the experience of swap summer.
And so you get in there and you are going to be yelled at and you are going to be physically and mentally challenged completely. But it's a really good experience and really puts you, it's not a day in the life of a cadet during the year, obviously, but it's, um, it kind of gets you prepared for the summer program and then kind of gets you to talk one-on-one -on -one to a bunch of upper class cadets who are the ones training you. And so the juniors, I think his past summer, um, the juniors are the ones that are training the AIM program and the swap, uh, swap summer program. So you can literally just have conversations with your second uh, juniors and find out what the academy is all about. Is there hazing from upperclassmen? So hazing is like in the Coast Guard, like that's not the term like that is used for anything that we do. Like we do not haze in the Coast Guard. Um, a lot of times you'll hear um, some of the traditions that we have are called hazing, but it's um, not. Like hazing is definitely not anything that happens here. Um, if it does happen, then the people who are hazing anyone else will get in serious trouble. Like that's a major offense. Um, if you're re referring to um, the special things that the fourth bus have to do, so whether that's squaring their meals or busing the class or running in the P-ways when they're wearing gym gear, um, that's not hazing, that's part of the fourth class training program. Um, and those are all designed to develop certain skills and um, you know, self-discipline within the fourth class, but it's not like we're doing this to uh, pick out any freshmen or any cadets really. Um, it's not with any malintent whatsoever. So hazing is definitely not the term that we use because um, it's not what we do. So. What does it mean to square a meal? Sure thing. So squaring a meal, <laughs> um, basically when you're eating, you can't go from the plate directly to your mouth with your fork or your spoon. You have to bring it straight up and then spread it straight across. So pretty much your entire fourth class year, except for when or in um, the barracks that we live in, besides in your room, you are braced up. What we call it. So you're literally like eyes standing straight forward, shoulders back, in the position of attention. So during your meal, that doesn't change. It's not like you're sitting down. Maybe, oh, cool! I can look down now. You always are staying like that. So you kind of. And that starts, I mean, that starts the first day of swap summer, so they kind of train you and you get into the habit of it, and uh, it gets, it gets kind of second nature. You get so. used to it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it doesn't seem like the coolest thing in the world to be eating like this all the time, but... You get there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> in your mind, what are the greatest pros and cons of going to the academy? Alright, well the first pro that always comes to my head when people ask me are, is the fact that you have amazing opportunities just by coming to the academy. So um, we obviously, when we graduate, we're going to have fantastic opportunities in the Coast Guard, but that doesn't mean you have to wait until you graduate to have those really cool opportunities. Uh, I remember as a freshman, I came and I was getting to do the coolest things. I traveled to Washington, D.C. to receive an award for a club, and I, you know, I got to do these special nature projects through my, um, uh, my major as a marine environmental science, and it was just these really cool projects and these studies and so that's kind of the first pro that I would think of for the academy. I think my biggest pro that comes to mind uh, as a, being a cadet right now would be um, the relationships you make with all your friends. The core of cadets is right now we have less than a thousand people and we are like the tightest school I've, I've ever known. Like it's, we, you know everybody and not in like a bad way. Like yeah, I guess rumors will fly, but I mean, I have like the best friends that I've ever made and I, you don't lose those friends because you're going to be in a small um, service that you'll see these people again and you're going to keep in touch for the rest of your life and I think that's uh, the biggest pro that ever comes to mind is the bonds that you make here. Not to sound cheesy. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's still really true. Yeah. Um, biggest con for me I think is just um, with respect to like being in New London, um, some things like going to the airport or kind of like big city options aren't really available very easily or for a small amount, like you have to pay money to take a train somewhere. Uh, so in terms of going out on Liberty to do kind of really fun, crazy things, um, like going to New York City to see a show or a concert or whatever, um, that's not as easy as it would be if we were in a larger city. So I think that's kind of the biggest, biggest con is location. I mean, it's also Connecticut, so it does get cold. The winters are long. Um, right now it gets dark around six or 16.30, so 4.30. And uh, so that kind of makes it tough, but you know, you kind of—that's part of where you live. So.
How much on average do you have to sleep with homework and all other daily things going on? That was actually going to be uh, one of my cons was how you don't sleep as much as you like, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Not as much as other college students. Right. As a teenager, I guess you're, you want to sleep like, what, 11 hours a night and you want to go to bed at 3 a.m. but not wake up until like, whatever. But um, I think once you get your time management down, I think last year I didn't get too much sleep just because I would be starting my homework at like 9 and then so I'd be working on my homework a lot. Once you can like get the discipline, discipline yourself to start your homework earlier and to get your stuff done, I think this year my average going to bed has been like 10, 30, or 11, honestly, and so you're getting up at 6, but that's 6, and six and a half, 7 hours. 7 and a half, 8 hours, yeah. It's, it's very, very possible and doable, like Kim said. It's all about just kind of time management. You know, if you get back to your room and you do decide to talk to your friends for two hours, then you're not starting your homework until 9, 10 o'clock at night. Well, that's the issue. So. And then the other addition to that question was how much uh, time, how much homework do you have a night? It, I mean, not only does it depend on your major, it depends on how much you procrastinate, and it depends on the week. Like some weeks I would literally, I mean, maybe like one essay to write all week or something, and then just a little bit of math homework. But then other weeks, like this week, I had like three presentations and three tests, and it was just a little... I mean, it's like any other college, honestly. I mean, you're going to run into stuff like that anywhere you go to school, so you'll find. I mean, my friends at other colleges, they're always talking. You, know, you have an easy week, you have a hard week. So. Does the Coast Guard have Academy have FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Yes, they do. So are you part of it? I'm not. I'm not part of it, but I have lots of friends who are. Um, it's a very large organization, so we do have it. They meet during lunch. Most of our clubs, actually, most of their meetings are during lunch, so... Uh, that is kind of a benefit for time, if you will, because you're going to have to eat lunch anyway, so you might as well use, uh, utilize that time to meet with your clubs. Um, that's clubs mostly meaning non-sport related. So. Do you get to choose your roommates? What are the rooms like? Um, you get to put in who you want to be your roommate. There's no promise that you're going to get that roommate. In your first year especially, uh, they just uh, one one senior in the company will be the one um, assigning rooms and they organize it into the hallways so I mean you're going to room with obviously same gender and then someone in your grade that's always going to be um, guaranteed but uh, you don't get to I mean you don't get to choose what you say like it's not like if you say I'm rooming with this person and they say I'm rooming with that person doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen most likely it will but and again not guaranteed and then the rooms, uh, again, they're kind of standard, standard dorm room. Uh, so you, you walk in, we have you know closets right there on the sides, and you have your beds and your desks. Um, so there's there aren't really any options in terms of rooms, which I guess is uh, it makes it nice, honestly. Like you don't even have to worry about filling out the rooming forms and what type of room and blah blah blah. blah. Um, so they're you know, standard dorm room. So uh, yeah, so I mean no. No personal bathroom, there are there's basically community men and community women bathroom on each floor. Um, the dorms are co-ed, so for example, my neighbors are two female cadets, so um, that doesn't mean really anything. Um, but so you, you'll be in a room with your with your roommate, but then in that hallway, there could be you know guys and girls all down the hallway. Hi everybody, I'm third class Jamie Davis, so I'm a sophomore too. And I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. I also do um, Windjammers, which is the marching band like he was talking about, and Glee Club, and then Women's Lacrosse, too. So if you have any questions about any of that. I also went to prep school, so if you have prep school questions, I can answer those. And I'm a government major. I'm a sophomore in high school. What classes do you recommend I take to be able to get into the academy? Definitely the highest level you can go to at your school. So whether that's AP, for those any of you who have IB, International Baccalaureate, if you can take um, honors classes or if you can take classes at like a local community college or university, definitely do that. So, I mean, admission staff will tell you they want to see you taking the highest science, math, and English, and that's definitely really valuable. Um, look at also look at the classes you're going to be taking as a freshman, some of the, the general education classes, if you will. You're going to be taking chemistry. You're going to be taking physics. You're going to be taking calculus. So. If your school has those classes, especially the advanced classes, calculus, physics, chemistry, take those classes. They're really beneficial. Um, I took AP Physics, AP Chem, and AP Calculus in high school, 
And when I got to the academy, I was able to test out of basically all of the chemistry classes, all the physics classes, and all the chem um, calc classes. Um, so it's it's definitely beneficial and worth your while if you get to take those classes. So the highest highest possible. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little different. I'm not very good at math and science. So my senior year, I didn't take an AP science class. And I highly recommend to you to take something like that. Because I went to prep school, and then I had to take those classes at prep school. So I would really recommend um, challenging yourself. Even if you think you're not going to be the best at it, challenging yourself and showing that you can do that. You want to come do you have regular vacation times, as traditional colleges do? Uh, yeah, we have Thanksgiving off, so we just got a week of Thanksgiving. And then um, Christmas, we'll get two and a half weeks this year. And then a spring break, too. And then uh, we get three weeks of summer. So we don't get, a lot of colleges will have like a fall break. We don't get a fall break. Um, and when she says we have three weeks in the summer, that means we have three weeks of being at home on leave. So basically you can choose whatever you want to do, go on vacation. Uh, but classes do end in May. So we go classes August to May. And then that summer training period, I mean, if the way you think of it, at least I think of it as it's almost like a vacation. Yes, you are working, but you're not sitting there in a classroom studying and writing papers and all that stuff. So um, your summers are a lot of fun. They're great training programs, so they're basically like, I mean, it's a whole summer off of doing stuff. It'd be like if you went to summer camps over the summer or something like that. Like, it's that same sort of mentality, I guess. So. Yeah, you're working. Like, this summer, I spent six weeks on Eagle, which I don't know if you look on the website, but it's a big sailing ship, and we went through the Caribbean, so we got to go to St. Martin and Aruba and um, Guantanamo Bay and Cuba, so it was really cool. So it's a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. And then I spent um, six weeks in Virginia Beach, too, so that was really fun, learned a lot. What is the SWAB Summer Program? So the SWAB Summer Program, that's, that's our basic training, if I guess that's the best way to um, explain it. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna get here and basically second class, so juniors, so what we did, rising juniors, we will be training you, well, we won't, They'll be training I'll you. Be uh, they'll be training you in basically how to be part of the Coast Guard, but also how to be a cadet. So you'll come here. There's still that you know boot camp. You're gonna be yelling. You're gonna be running all over the place. You're gonna be doing push-ups. You're going to have to learn what's called indoc. All this information about the Coast Guard uh, that will really, in the end, make you successful because you know how the Coast Guard works and how the military works. Uh, but it's it's your basic training. So yeah, it's basically just a period to throw so many things at you and see how you react and. Um, it really brings you close to people in your class. You become a team and you make some best friends during your small summer. Can you elaborate on some of the traditions you mentioned earlier, talking about running and right. squaring your meals? So uh, there's, as freshmen, you basically, you have to earn what's called carry-on, which is uh, being able to walk around and look around. And so when you don't have carry-on, uh, you have to square. So that means when you're walking, you're walking in the middle of the, the hallway or the passageway. When you get to somewhere where you have to turn a corner, you have to pivot sharply on one foot in one direction or the other. Uh, if you're wearing like the workout gear, the PT gear, you have to basically run or jog down the POAs instead of just walking. And squaring meals, like we mentioned, with the, the fork. Uh, what else? You, you have to march in section to class, so you have to march with other people in a formation to and from class. And um, you also have to greet everyone you see, like upperclassmen. Yeah. <laughs> so you learn names really fast, and you have to know everyone in your company's names. So you say, like, good morning, sir. So, so sir. Yeah. yeah. What is there to do for fun on the weekends? Well, there's a limo bus. So um, it's a limo route that goes all through New London. So it stops at Target, Walmart, the movie theater, the mall. So you can um, get out and go with your friends to go out to dinner or something like that. Um. If you, if you know a senior or once, actually once you get older and you have a car yourself, being able to drive around, there are some pretty cool um, small coastal towns just around here, so like places like Niantic or Mystic, so if you've heard of the Mystic Aquarium, so um, you can go there. So those are like, I guess, the local things. Um, like I mentioned earlier, some of the bigger things, like if you want to go see a concert or something like that, you might have to travel a bit to Providence or Hartford, New York City, Boston. Um, totally doable though. So. How much of your monthly stipend goes to uniforms, books, etc., and how much do you get to keep? Kind of depends on the month, honestly. So um, we get roughly what three fifty or so. A I get month. around two hundred every two weeks. Mm -hmm. so. so I get about three fifty every two weeks. It's 
you do manage your own money, so when you get here, they'll give you a, a budget book letting you know, okay, this month of this year, you're going to have to buy this. Um, you know that every August and every January, you'll have to buy books, um, but it's it's kind of however much you spend. So it, again, I mean, we just, as juniors, we have to purchase a lot of new uniform items because after two years, they get worn out. So that was a, a large expense, probably around probably $400 total at the beginning of the summer. Um, you know, you work up to saving that, so um, you, you still have a fair amount of money to, if you want, go out, buy snacks, see a movie, go to the mall, stuff like that. Yeah, it's definitely manageable. They pay you enough. Yeah. Don't worry about, you know, you'll have enough money for getting tickets home if you need to pay for tickets <laughs> home or whatever, so um, you'll, you'll have, have plenty of money. It's fine. What do you think would set you apart from other applicants during the admissions process? Um, my one recommendation would be find something you love in high school and really dive into it. There are tons of people that will do everything in high school, but they won't, I don't know, be really passionate about one thing. So I would definitely recommend being um, well-rounded, so don't just do one thing. But be well-rounded, but at the same time have something you love, and like a good mentor or a teacher that can really write you a good recommendation. Yeah, that's what, that's what I would say. Kind of pick the, something that you're really passionate about and get those leadership positions, whether it's a club or a sports team, um, and show that, okay, look, I've already started my leadership development. Here at the Coast Guard Academy, it's all about leadership development and developing as a, kind of a, a whole person. So you, that's like, like Jamie said, you wanna show, you are developing as a whole person, but you're specifically working on that leadership because that's what it's, it's like to be a cadet and to be an officer in the Coast Guard. Do cadets have combat training? Not really, so we don't, I mean, you you can if you do a special program going into your senior year. It's what's called uh, boarding team member uh, training. But it's again, we don't have that physical training during the school year, so that's not really part of the normal cadet process. Um, you'll hear at other academies like the Naval Academy. I have a friend who goes there, and they have to take boxing, and they during the summer they have boxing classes. We do have personal defense classes, but it's not exactly combat. That's like the personal defense. Um, if someone you know, is coming after you, what are you going to do to defend yourself, but not necessarily like, fight back? If you do, you have personal computers or TVs in your room? Um, everyone will be issued your own computer, so during your swap summer, you'll get a computer. Uh, you cannot have TVs though, but um, when you're upper class, you can watch like movies on your um, actual computer. You're allowed to have large monitors for your computer that you can hook up, but you can't actually have a physical TV. Um, we don't have cable connections or anything like that in our room, but we do have lounges um, basically scattered throughout Chase Hall, which is our barracks, but our dorms, and those have TVs that are connected to cable, so you can go there to watch television. Again, a lot of things nowadays are streamed over the internet, so uh, if you have a computer, that's basically enough. Are you allowed to hang pictures up on your dorm room walls? So regulations say that you're allowed um, basically one poster per person, um, and they have to be like put up with blue tack. There aren't really any places to put up like frames or whatnot. Um, but I mean, some people will get those like stick on the wall hooks that you can hang small things on. Um, it can't be like large and obnoxious because we have what are called room standards. Basically, everyone's room has to fit within certain rules. But um, I mean, you get a personal shelf, so you can personalize it that way. You can put pictures on your desk and uh, you know, put stuff on the back of the door, I guess, if you want to. Right now, everybody's decorating for Christmas, so yeah, we're allowed to decorate. Sure. So it's not like a prison. You can have your own life, and you can decorate your room for Christmas. Yeah. So um, my room has tons of lights in it, and you can make it homey. Yeah, true. Like you'll you'll like walk into people's rooms, and they have lights all over the place to put wrapping paper on the walls. Like it's really it's really cool. It's really neat. So um, obviously, that's only kind of during the holidays or like around um, Halloween or something like that. But still, fun. It makes day, it homey. So. Mm -hmm. Are your rooms inspected for cleanliness? Yep. Absolutely. So uh, we so there are basically what I call like random inspections, which some one of the staff members in your company might go around and check your room to see if it's good. Um, we also have formal inspections about once a month, where you, that's where you do a little bit more of the, the deeper cleaning. You're getting the dust out of the corners and stuff like that. Um, but in general, if someone walks by your room, they shouldn't have to stop and walk back and look. So all your stuff will be squared away, you know, all your clothes folded in the drawers, nothing kind of just sitting out, um, your floor is swept, stuff like that.
but you really get to the point where you get used to the standards and it's not too much to ask to make your bed or buff your deck or keep things in line. It's honestly nice because you don't have to worry about, oh, my roommate's going to be really dirty or messy and leave food all over the place. I mean, it, it actually is really nice. Like Chase Hall is pretty clean uh, because we clean it so much. <laughs> so, What does it mean to buff your deck? Well, in Chase Hall, that's where we all live in Chase Hall. Uh, they have buffers, which basically, I don't even know how to describe it. It's so, like this machine. Like if you see, okay, if you've ever seen like a janitor or someone who like has that big huge machine that they're like going down the hallway and like going really slowly and it kind of is like the pad on the bottom. Um, we basically do that with a smaller version of that, but like, so we make sure that our, the tiles are like not scuffed and stuff like that. that makes sense. So makes your, like, the floor shine, look like no, linoleum. <laughs> Can you test out of courses if you've passed the AP exams? So passing the AP exam doesn't mean that you're automatically going to test out. Uh, that basically when you get to swap summer, they'll ask anyone who wants to take the validation exam. So that means you like validate the course. If you do well enough in the exam, they'll offer you the opportunity. So for example, I took the chemistry exam. They said, okay, you validated, you showed that you have the knowledge covered in the chemistry one and chemistry two classes would you like to go on to physics? And so I had that choice. So let's say I, I felt like I would like to go back to chemistry. I would have total option to go back and do that, but like I did, I chose to go on to physics, got to take the validation exam for that. So yes, you can test out, but just because you took the AP exam doesn't mean that you automatically are going to test out, or vice versa. So if, you, if you're in an honors chemistry class, and you do really, really well in that class, and you learn the material really well, you get to swap summer, you take that exam and do well, then you should be able to validate. it. What prep school did you go to? I went to Marion Military Institute. It's in Alabama. They also offer uh, Georgia Military College, I believe, uh, within um, Georgia. So there's two different ones you can be sent to right now. Um, it's a whole program called the SeaGas program, so the Coast Guard Academy Scholars program. And um, basically, they'll You'll apply to the school, so I applied to the academy for his class, and then um, I got deferred, and then I got offered the prep school program, and so I accepted that, and then I spent a year at the prep school, and you're enlisted in the Coast Guard during that year, so they pay for everything, and you get a salary too, so they really take care of you during that prep school year. And then um, after that, if you got all of your grades in line and um, can pass the physical fitness stand standards, then um, you'll be off an appointment. So I was offered mine, and I came for the following year. Do you continue to be paid for the summer work? Yeah, so it's a salary. So you're basically set, you're given a set amount that you'll be paid each month, and then you'll get paid that. So it's not, it's not based on hours or anything like that. So during the summer, you still get paid, which makes it nice because when you're out during the summer, you know, you're more living on your own, so you will need that more money. But then, of course, you're not paying for books or you're not paying for uniform items. So. At what point can you leave for the weekend? Um, it depends on what class you're in. So freshmen don't get to leave on Friday nights, but they'll get to leave on Saturdays from 12 until 12, I believe, or 1 o'clock in the morning. And then on Sundays, you can leave from um, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning until 6 at night. So that's for freshmen. And then every year, you get a little more um, of like privileges and more, they call it liberty. And so as a sophomore, I can leave on Friday nights and then the same Saturday and Sunday. And then as a junior, you can... You can stay overnight on Saturday, which means I don't have to come back Saturday night. I don't have to be back until um, 7 p.m. on Sunday. So, so. And then seniors can um, move on Thursday nights, so they get the best privileges of all. <laughs> so, and you can also request for special um, weekend liberty, basically. So let's say, for example, you want to go see a concert or something in Boston, and it doesn't make sense for you to, or it's not possible for you to go to the concert and come back on that Saturday night, you can ask special permission to go off base and stay off base from Saturday to Sunday or whenever the concert is, or uh, let's say that there's a wedding back home and you want to fly home for the weekend, you can ask permission to leave on Friday night or Friday afternoon after classes and fly home and you know get back late on Sunday. So you can ask that permission. Um, there, you know, there's a small little form that you fill out and then you just get approved. Um, so yeah, it's not like you're stuck here uh, <laughs> with, with even if you have to go to something. I noticed only one of the prep schools offers baseball. If I am selected to attend one of the prep schools, will there be consideration given to my intention of playing baseball at the academy? Uh, yes, there will be. So I know uh, Marion offers baseball, so um, they'll probably talk to you. Your admissions officer will be all over that, especially if you're um, being recruited. 
but um, you'll work with those programs. I know Georgia has football, and then um, Marion has softball too. So um, you'll go through their training programs and play at their schools, and then um, when you're here, you're just one more year ahead. Can you receive care packages from family? Absolutely. Yes, so I actually today got two giant boxes um, from my mom, just like everything that I need, um, kind of a pre-Christmas gift, I guess, if you will. But yeah, you're allowed to get care boxes. Um, so we obviously, we have basically postal boxes, but like the where we get our mail, but you can send any size package to the uh, mail room and they'll just put a little slip in your, in your box saying, hey, you got a, a post, like a giant box, so come, <laughs> come get it from us, so. You're totally allowed to. If you want to attend a concert in the summer, but it's during basic training, are you able to leave the training? No, unfortunately. Um, yeah, basic training is the only time you wouldn't be allowed to get that special permission to leave. Um, you're, you're literally running, well, not necessarily running, but you're doing something from 6 o'clock in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Um, and really missing any part of that um, is no good for you because then you're missing out some sort of learning that you need, some sort of information that you need. So you won't be able to leave for that. How does it work if there's a family emergency at home? So if something happens at home, um, they have something called e-leave, so emergency leave, and then you'll just talk to your company officer, your company chief, someone like that, and then you'll get to go home right away. Well, if that's during the soft summer program, that, that process might be a little bit longer, just like I said, because it is the training program. Um, but we do have counselors on base and chaplains on base who would be able to talk to you and kind of help you um, at least cope with whatever you may need to cope with um, during that time and then you know right after the training period's over maybe give you a chance to go home. But um, if it's something absolutely dire, then they might be able to make that exception. So, but hopefully, hopefully you guys won't even have to worry about that. So. Do you get time off for Thanksgiving and Christmas? Uh, yes, you do. You get a week off for Thanksgiving and then you get uh, two and a half weeks off for Christmas. What do you enjoy most about the Coast Guard? Coast Guard has really awesome opportunities. So there are so many job options, or I guess career paths for the Coast Guard. So I think that's really what I look forward to the most um, for the Coast Guard. I, there are so many things that I want to do in the Coast Guard or just do in, in general, and the Coast Guard has that option or has positions that it would allow me to do what I want. Um, I know Kim said this earlier, but really the people you meet here really make it worth it. I've met so many amazing people, and they're all different, they come from different walks of life, and they've really made this place uh, worth being here. What types of things do you want to do in the Coast Guard? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, well, I know for sure when I graduate, I'm going to go to a Coast Guard cutter, and uh, hopefully I'll be doing engineering, so I'll be working with the propulsion system and the other auxiliary systems that we have on board ships to help the ship running and make it livable and uh, eventually hoping to do some sort of pollution response. I think that'd be really cool to do pollution response. Um, given my major as an operations research major, hopefully going into some sort of logistics or planning for the Coast Guard and being able to kind of manage uh, assets that way. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do yet, but that's the nice thing. You really don't have to know coming to the academy. You can kind of come here, feel it out, see what you like. If you want to go into aviation or if you know you want to be on a cutter, uh, you have time to figure it out. So I'm still figuring it out too, but it's definitely, um, you have time. That's the beauty of the summer programs. That's when you get to really feel out what it's like to be in the Coast Guard. We have a, what's called a pilot shadow program that you can do during the school year. And you can shadow pilots up at uh, Cape Cod. So that's pretty cool. And again, other clubs that we have here on base, just our faculty, the officers who are our instructors, they have awesome Coast Guard knowledge. So just talking to them, learning about what their career was like, stuff like that. Can you talk a little bit about the different uniforms you're wearing? Sure. Well, right now, I'll show you. <laughs> I am wearing um, ODU, so operational dress uniforms. It's um, our operational uniforms, so you'll wear it. Um, they wear it in the fleet a lot to do different things. And then we wear this uniform on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So what I'm wearing is called the uh, Service Dress Blues or Service Dress Bravos. Basically, this is our, our winter, uh, I guess, more formal uniform, like kind of a, a business casual working uniform. So I'm wearing this because I actually came from um, a special ceremony detail called colors when we raise and lower the flag. So I was taking down the flag today. So when I was taking down the flag, I had to wear this and just came straight from that to here. What about the stars on your chest? What do they mean? So the stars, they refer to uh, basically different 
achievements as a cadet. So the silver star, or excuse me, the gold star, that's for academic excellence. So if you get a 3.15 GPA or higher, uh, you get to wear that star, the gold star, the next semester. The silver star refers to military excellence. So uh, we basically, we get evaluated once a semester on how we're doing militarily. So that's, that has to do with the trainings that we complete, how we're working with our division. I'll let Jamie kind of talk about how divisions and departments work for being a cadet. And uh, so you're evaluated and then based on your score as a cadet, um, you, get, you can get a silver star. And then the blue star is for uh, physical fitness exam. If you earn a score of 270 points or higher, you get to wear the blue star for that semester. There's also a bronze star for uh, doing really well academically after not doing so well. So if you improve your GPA, I'm not sure what the amount is, but I think it's, yeah, I think it's 0.5. So if you improve your GPA 0.5 or more, you get to wear the bronze star to show, hey, look, I made this really awesome improvement. So, um, so divisions, this is how they organize the academy. So basically the divisions make the academy go around. So everybody, everybody's put into a division at the beginning um, of the semester. And um, how many divisions would you say? Each company probably has like 15 to 20 divisions. And then um, each division will have a division officer, so that's a senior. And then it'll have a second class, so a junior, then a third class, a sophomore, and then a freshman as well. And then basically that's like your family at the academy. Don't they really um, keep you accountable for everything. We'll look out if you have a problem. It's like the first person you go to. And then you'll um, send emails with them too. So they really become your family here at the academy. How can you get into the prep schools that you mentioned? So to get into a prep school, you basically um, apply to the academy like normal. And then um, you might be deferred or waitlisted. And if you, um, basically I just waited. I got deferred in December. So I waited and waited and then I heard back around March or April that I was offered on um, the prep school program. So um, basically they'll offer it to you. Can you talk a little bit about the sponsor family program? Sure. Um, so at the, or during swap summer, at the towards the end of swap summer, they'll ask you if you want to be in a sponsor family program. And most people uh, take part in it because um, usually everybody that doesn't live close here wants somewhere to maybe chill out and pretend it's their home a little bit. And it, it's called your sponsor family because it pretty much is it's like your second family. I mean, other than I guess your division here. But um, so on the weekends and stuff, I have a, a just a sponsor mom. She's uh, actually the manager at the exchange here, and um, so I can just go to her house and um, bring like a pair of sweatpants and get out of um, get out of my uniform and hang out on the weekends, watch some movies, play with her cats, and um, so and uh, sponsor families are also very they apply or they. Um, want to be in the program as well. So they're willing to give you a ride to the airport if you need it, or they're willing to help you out no matter what. Um, so it's really cool to keep in contact with them and have somebody pretty much in the area to talk to and to hang out at their house and pretend it's your home, I guess. What's the exchange? Sorry? What's the exchange that you mentioned? She's the manager of oh, the exchange. Oh, <laughs> it's, um, it's like the store on campus. Basically, it sells everything from food. It's like a mini Target, really. <laughs> everything from food to like Coast Guard clothes to um, like Nike stuff. It's really nice, and everything um, is pretty cheap actually. So you can get essentially anything at the exchange. When does your military commitment kicked in? After your sophomore year? After your junior year? Um, your official military commitment is after you graduate. So um, once you graduate, you become an ensign in the Coast Guard, and um, you'll be spending at least five years in the Coast Guard. That's what you, uh, I guess, owe after your um, years at the academy. So you'll be a commissioned officer after graduation, where you get your big, your big gold on your shoulder. <laughs> How's the food here at the Coast Guard Academy? It's pretty good. Um, in the mornings, we have family-style breakfast. So you'll sit at a table, and they'll pass all the food around. So like they'll tell you what you're having, but it's good though, so everyone likes it. And the same thing happens at lunch. And um, if you don't like that, you can have vegetarian options, or there's always peanut butter and jelly to have. And then dinners are buffet style, so um, there's tons of food. You just go in and get what you want, and you can um, eat that. What'd you guys do this past summer? Um, well, we had almost the same summer. So um, you uh, for. Uh, before your third class year, you'll go on Eagle for either the first half of the summer or the second half. And Eagle, as she said, is the big Coast Guard sailing trip, er, sailing ship. It's for training. That's what Eagle is. It's to train 
Um, and it was kind of our first opportunity to get afloat for a long period of time. So, and as she said, we went down to the Caribbean and saw Aruba and stuff. And then um, the second half of the summer, we sat at a Coast Guard station um, in Virginia Beach. So you kind of just got to, Coast Guard stations have um, mostly enlisted members rather than officers. So you just kind of um, pretty much are thrown into the, the real Coast Guard and you get to learn a lot about what they do every day and kind of um, rather than being at the academy and seeing your fellow Coast Guard cadets, you're seeing um, real Coast Guard in action and taking a part in SAR cases. So, but it's, uh, we were the only two people at Virginia Beach Station. It just happened to be that we were together. So <laughs> at the, at the, uh, for the summer, the second half of your uh, third class summer, you're going to be um, at a station or a cutter pretty much in throughout the United States. Um, you could be anywhere. I know a couple people went to Miami or to Hawaii. To and Alaska. So. Yeah. And you can kind of, you don't really get to decide where you go, but you can, um, just like the roommate thing, you can put in for it. Like we put in to be together, and we have to be together, so. Are there gluten-free options in the cafeteria? Uh, yes, there are. I know um, they really try to adapt everything to um, fit the cadets' needs. So they really go out of their way to make sure everyone has something that um, works for them. And they have um, a little suggestion box. So, and they're, like she said, they, I mean, they, they're here for the cadets. So if you suggest to have more vegetarian options or more gluten-free options, they will definitely help you out with that. Is long hair allowed on a female? Ah, uh, yes it is. Um, basically you just have to be able to put it in a bun, so it could be as long as you want, as long as it can like be put into a nice bun. Can cadets have cars? Uh, your first year or senior year, you can get a car and you can park it on base. You'll get a little sticker that will allow you on base each time. Um, so before your senior year, um, you'll get offered a car loan, so basically, um, I think last year it was like $36,000 um, is offered to you. And then you don't have to take it if you don't want to, but most people take it because um, it has really great rates on it. So they'll get that loan and then they'll get a car. So first these will roll in with all their new cars. It's really funny to see everybody get their new cars. But um, so basically almost every senior will have a car on campus. Do you guys know anything about the second class exchange program with the other service academies? Um, I know that you apply for it and you have to be in good standing, so have a um, high military score as well as a high fitness score and a high um, GPA. And um, one semester. You can only go for one semester, right? Yeah. It can be the, um, here, he's going to come talk to you about <laughs> <laughs> They just changed it actually, so it's only the fall semester now, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so uh, the exchange program is only for second class cadets, so for juniors, and right now just because um, because the program, we're just trying to scale the program down, it's only for the fall, but you apply in the spring of your sophomore year. So if um, Jamie and Kim want to apply, they'll actually be getting that application this coming spring. Um, Jamie's totally correct. You uh, have to have good military scores, you have to have good physical fitness scores, and you have to have good academic scores, um, but you can pick whichever whichever branch you want to go to, so whether you want to go to Army or Navy or Air Force, so you can go to any of those academies, and uh, it, is a, it is kind of a selection process based on the best applicants. Uh, so it does vary each year in terms of how many people get to go to the exchange program. So for example, we have only one cadet at Navy, but we have four at Air Force. So it just kind of fluctuates that way, so that's the exchange program. If you are accepted, attend, and then decide the academy is not for you, at what point, if ever, are you obligated to pay back the cost of tuition you received? So when you finish your third class year, you actually sign uh, a waiver, or I guess um, a page seven, which is a form, saying that you are going to pay back if you do not uh, complete your time at the academy. So what will happen is if you decide to leave or if you have to leave because your grades are too low or some sort of disciplinary action, uh, then you're required to serve in the Coast Guard. You'll basically become an enlisted member uh, just based on how much training you've had. That's kind of where you fit in. Um, and you'll be required to pay back that time that way. So. What is the school spirit like? Do students support the sports teams? Um, school spirit is awesome, actually. Um, during our biggest rival is the Merchant Marine Academy up in Kings Point. And so we have an entire spirit week right before that football game. And um, we'll just 
the fourth class will be, instead of greeting you as good morning or good afternoon, they'll say go Bears. And so, um, and we'll get t-shirts that week to, that everybody um, can wear to the pep rally. We have a pep rally at the end of the week. And it's just a time for, like, for kind of not be so concentrated on the military aspect and kind of I mean, everyone's allowed to go to the sports games that we have on base here a lot of times. Cadets will go up at lunch and say, hey, we have a soccer game tonight, we have a basketball game tonight, come out and support us. Uh, so, I mean, that's part of your time management if you have time, but a lot of people go, they support their friends, so it's a lot of fun. Sports games are awesome. Can you talk a little about your summer this past summer? Sure, absolutely. So, your second class summer, uh, basically, like I mentioned, you do part of the training program, so you're either going to be doing AIM or you're going to be doing SWAP summer. Some people do the like pre-prep school program, the CGAS program. You guys will come here if you go into prep school. You'll come to the academy for three weeks, go through a mini swap summer, if you will, before heading off to uh, whichever prep school you're going to. So that's three weeks of what I did this past summer. I was actually training all the incoming freshmen on Eagle. So I actually got to be on Eagle again this summer, which is pretty awesome. But then for the 11 other weeks, uh, I had three weeks of leave, but then for the 11 other weeks, we have basically week-long training programs. So we got pistol qualified. We went on a sailing trip around New England. So we went to Martha's Vineyard in Nantucket on these beautiful 44-foot long sailing boats that the Alumni Association and Parents Association uh, basically purchased for cadets and designed for cadets. So these beautiful boats that we got to go on for that. Uh, we are, because we were on Eagle, we got a special navigation week at the uh, merchant, or excuse me, Massachusetts Maritime Academy. So we went there and we got special training from those instructors, which was pretty awesome. Uh, what else do we do? We have a class called Rotor, Rules of the Road. You learn uh, basically ship handling skills with that, and then you also apply those down at our training boats, which are called T-boats. That's what I did this summer. If someone were to walk around Chase Hall tonight during study hour, what types of things might they see? Um, you'll definitely see pretty much everybody wearing dark blue. You wear, everybody's got to wear, um, during the school day, um, everybody's going to be in uniform, but after 1600, you can change into what we call study hour gear. And you, it's uh, the dark blue mesh shorts that say Coast Guard on them, and then a dark blue shirt that will have the class presser. Um, and then, uh, basically everyone's just doing homework at night, and so you'll be working on projects or um, just doing your own thing in your room, doing homework. Um, during the week, it's really focused on academics. Uh, people like you go into their clubs and stuff too, but mostly academics at night. You'll see freshmen squaring around. So whenever <laughs> whenever they want to walk around, you'll see them squaring <laughs> around their little corners. Uh, but yeah, and most most of the activity in the evening is focused on uh, doing your schoolwork, working on projects. Um, For uh, group projects, we also have um, day rooms, which is just a bigger. Uh, room with a couple of couches and like a big uh, kind of conference table so if you need to work on a chart for like a navigation class or something you don't need to be cramped up in your room you can work on a group project in the bigger rooms. Is family allowed to visit the academy? Uh, yes your family can be on base but they cannot go within um, Chase Hall so basically that big building where we live except for parents again they can come visit there's like certain times so they can see where you live at some point. But uh, usually they can just like come on base, and then um, there's a restaurant you can go have dinner with them, or just walk around with them. What's Parents Weekend? So Parents Weekend happens in um, either September or October, and basically your parents can come and see you do a parade and um, watch a football game. So I'm in the marching band, so they saw me march. They're all proud, and just basically things like that, and then um, you get to leave, so you'll get to spend the night with your parents, which is nice, because you can't leave. And um, just basically seeing them and showing them where you live and go to school. And they get to go to class with you if you want to take them to classes that Friday, so. How many college visits would you recommend? <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely visit the academy if you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, definitely. No, uh, so. Uh, you can talk to your admissions officer because there are some special open houses and other visit programs that you want to look into for sure when coming to the academy. So I did what's called cadet for a day. Uh, basically, I got to stay overnight with a cadet, shadow a cadet, go to classes. Uh, so if you come, you know, there are programs where you can come and have lunch with cadets or you can do that overnight program or at least visit classes. Uh, one thing that we were told when I was applying, so I didn't get to go to AIM, and so that's one of the reasons why um, they kind of invited me to go to this overnight program, but they said, remember that Swab Summer is seven weeks, 
and being at the academy total is a roughly 200 weeks. So yes, it's a bummer that you don't get to go to AIM, but don't forget, you still have you know, 193 weeks of the school year, if you will. Uh, so if you, let's say you apply to AIM, you don't get to come in, definitely try to get to one of those visit programs. Uh, most of the visit programs are only for seniors, but again, talk to your admissions officer, there might be some other sort of visit programs, but definitely get to do that because it'll show you cadet life after swap summer, which is going to be really the majority of your time here. What are some benefits you will receive by attendance at the Coast Guard Academy that cannot be achieved through a civilian college? Commissioning as a, co yeah. commissioning as a Coast Guard officer. Job like security. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely you do have, basically you have a job for five years, guaranteed after you graduate, due to that service commitment. Um, Amazing summer opportunities. You need to go countless different places. I know a lot of my friends from home coming back from college, they get uh, jobs at like Subway or something for the summer just to like um, keep up or keep themselves busy, but we're off, we're getting paid, but we're off sailing Eagle or in Virginia Beach. <laughs> so, um, definitely. What is the most challenging thing about Swap Summer? It really depends who you are, because yeah. some people it's um, the physical aspects, if you're not definitely in the greatest shape. Uh, some people it's memorizing, it's a lot of memorizing. And then other people it's just long and they just, it lets it get to them. They just think it's really long. Uh, for other people it's uh, the emotional, like you're getting yeah. screamed at. And you're away from your family, <laughs> usually for you the first time. You don't have a phone. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's a really intense environment and uh, you know, there's always going to be something. So you know, even if it's just working with the other, the other kids in your company, so you're getting kids from all over the country, you're thrown into this intense situation and they tell you you have to work as a team and you hardly know each other. So um, it could even just be the, the aspect of teamwork. A lot of my friends who are in college tell me how they love the freedom they are given. Do you feel like you are given a lot of freedom in the Coast Guard? You, you definitely have freedom. So this is a military college, so there are going to be more rules than normal at, uh, than there would be at a normal civilian college. But it doesn't mean, it, we don't feel like we're restricted all the time or like we're living in some sort of prison. Like, not at all. Um, yes, there are rules that you have to follow. Uh, for example, we have to wear this uniform. We can't just wear whatever we want. But, I mean, really, it's not, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make you seem like you're losing out on who you are as a person. There's still plenty of room to be, you know, if you're artistic or musical or whatever, uh, whatever you're interested in, there's plenty of room to do that. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to do what you like to do. Lots of clubs, like I said, you can travel on the weekends. You can get that special permission to do whatever you want. Um, we do have, um, well, like they said, the sponsor family program. Your sponsor families, they can take you places. Just being at a home, you know, just relaxing there, watching movies. So, I guess that's so. Not as many freedoms as you would as a normal college, but it's. I think an overwhelming freedom that normal college students see is like pretty much the option to go to class, and like your parent is breathing down your neck. You need to be in class right now. And so, um, but I think something that we have to realize is because ours is, um, classes are required. So you literally, I mean, you're being paid to go here and your job here is to learn. So, I mean, going to class, yeah, it's required and you're not, um, it's not really an option to go to class, but it's not, it's different from normal college, but it's also, I mean, you're getting paid here to go to class. Well, thank you very much for um, watching our cadet panel. We're all very pleased to do this for you. If you have any questions, please um, contact your admissions officer. And thank you very much. See you guys. Thank you.